What is up, everyone? Welcome to the semifinals of the Portland Monthly Pre Modern Paper Magic Afternoons February edition. We got some really cool decks, so let's dive in. First up, we have Alec return to camera from last round with his red green survival deck. Just a value deck overall. Survival of Fittest, of course, being an incredibly strong card and just being able to find any toolbox creature you may need. This is just a creature heavy mid range deck looking to get value out of the discard through Basking Root Walla and Arrogant Worm, as well as other creatures taking advantage of the discard with Squee as well. Really cool, really strong, obviously. So let's see how it does. And Joe is making his return to camera after a pretty disappointing round one showing so obviously he's been doing very well since then very excited to see this deck perform well on camera and again it's just a beautiful deck all foreign language except for a few pieces like the underground rivers and the undiscovered paradises and some amazing altars that unmask um, by rk post is awesome really cool to see a reanimator list make it this far and it's also just a really cool list in general so without further ado let's get into the games <laughs> Once again, we got Alec on the left and Joe on the right. We also got the mat going a little bit off screen. <laughs> but at least the dice are towards the bottom this time, so they're a little more visible. Okay, so this is going to be a very interesting set of games. Uh, looks like both players actually mold to six already. For Joe, it makes sense. Uh, Reanimator is definitely a very mole-happy deck. <laughs> uh, you really need a good turn one start where the deck doesn't do much. We got Gemstone Mines coming out. Notably, though, Alex's start was pretty slow. I just say Root Walla. All right, we're going to consider here. What are we discarding? I see two reanimation spells, so I'm assuming there's some targets in hand. And Animate Dead is going to do a lot of work here. We got a Cabal Therapy. Very interesting. So, if Joe can get those online, there is not much Alec is able to do about a giant creature. His deck's not super equipped to deal with that. And it looks like this is a very slow hand from Alec, just buffing the root wall, just trying to get some damage in. And I can't imagine that this game is going to end well. All right, we got reanimation coming in. Might as well do the exhume, right? Targeting Nishipa. How do you like a giant phantom tiger with lifelink? Or, sorry, pseudo lifelink. It's just a 7-7. Seven, seven. No big deal. Every time he takes damage, just take a point off. Can still stick around for a very long time, gaining a ton of life. Flame Tongue Kabu is a potential answer, though. Assuming he has a Lightning Bolt in hand, which he might have. Depending on how long that Nishiba sticks around, that could be a decent answer. <laughs> Thinking here I, on what he wants to do. I'm gonna get a forest and then I'm a passenger. Just gonna go ahead and fetch. Touching on end step, it looks like, and just passing. All right, we got an underground river, and we're gonna go digging for a few more cards. You got any more cool reanimation targets in there? Discarding the imp would be. Interesting, I guess. It, he must not have another big uh, hit. All right, we're just going to discard a couple of lands. Totally fine. Seven. Deck doesn't need a ton of mana. Seven to gain seven. And just swinging in for seven. Gain seven. And there should be some more dice there. He shouldn't have to use his own. There should be more directly left, including the one that Alec just took off, but whatever. <laughs> whatever works. 
All right, we're just gonna play the imp. Another land coming down. Notably, that imp is a two-two. He's probably not sticking around too much. Longer. Yep, imp is dead. Swing in for some damage. And still has a 7-7 seven, seven with lifelink. Still swinging in. All right, Alec, you got one turn. All right, here we go. Getting the big dice. Just a casual 30 life. Not a big deal. One thing I can never remember is if the, the Nishiba has trample too. Or is it flying? Or does it have both? I don't know. It's in Japanese and I can't read Japanese. And uh, either way, <laughs> I think Alex in trouble. Yep, we're just going to scoop it up and that is going to be game number one. All right. Good to see Joe getting to do the thing on camera finally. If you saw the round one match where he was against goblins, you'll know that it was a little bit heartbreaking. Not only getting maybe a little bit of bad luck in the first game, but also running into a Tormod's Crypt. In theory, in the blind, I did ask uh, his opponent about it in the future because <laughs> he saw the video and Joe actually told him he was on reanimator so maybe not as quite a good a read as we originally thought but still Tormod's Crypt definitely shuts the deck down okay we're gonna pedal into a consider and I guess we're gonna be looking for some lands does not find one. Oh no Joe not again <laughs> all right discarding a couple of big worms Ooh, a worm and an angel Oh no, he does have a land. Okay. You had me worried there. And is interestingly not... Oh, I guess the Tormod's Crypt does uh, stop it. Alex is playing super quick. But I feel like you have to crack the Crypt at some point, and you might as well do it now. Yep, force you to lose a graveyard. and taking a point and go dig in for more things so what he pitched was probably not the stuff he wanted to reanimate he does have another worm in hand Ooh, that's two lotus petals yeah that seems way better put those in the graveyard but i don't know if he has another reanimate spell right now And notably, with a discard outlet, if he does do something like Exhum, Alec could get something back as well. It obviously wouldn't be nearly as powerful, but he still could get something. All right, we're going to grab a mountain. And Alec doing a lot better in this match for sure, or in this game. Having the turn one hate was definitely a good call. And assuming that Joe doesn't draw into any reanimation spells, does have a very solid board. Players talking through something real quick. Look out! Look out! What's her name? Tapping three. And casting the monkey. Yes, casting the monkey. And also discarding anger. Now that he has a mountain out, all his guys got haste, so we're putting the clock down to 19. Ooh, is that a life death? I think it is. Crack that as well avoid taking damage because you're gonna be taking a bunch with death 
but we're getting a lifelink in our back, so that's something, right? All right, seven seven lifelink. The very least can chump block, prevent any kind of damage coming in. Ooh, a spike feeder or a spike weaver. Well, that's gonna stall things out a little bit. <laughs> it also cancels out any life gain. We're just gonna pass. No good attacks here. Doesn't make sense. This is a very good card from Alec, essentially blanking the big life linker, preventing any sort of swing in. Any sort of uh, jump block will basically just buy a little bit of time. Player's talking through something here. Oh, is going to swing in. Interesting. Not activating. Or I guess cannot activate the, the Spike Weaver. That's true. It does take a mana to activate. So getting in there while he can. But is that going to be too much of a problem? At 14. All right. We get a bunch of squirrels. <laughs> Swinging in with everything, and that's going to be game number two. That anger coming in clutch, getting Alec out of a tight spot for sure, although that Spike Weaver definitely helping things along. And, yeah, this has been a great couple of games. we got to see what the Reanimator deck does. we got to see what the Survival deck does without even seeing Survival. I don't even know if Alex played Survival in the last two rounds, which is kind of crazy. Definitely just focusing more on the creature side of things. And still doing well with it, obviously. I mean, he won last round on camera, and he's all tied up here in game three. And keeping a hand of seven, which is always good, but I think Joe is going to ship it back. That is definitely one of the downsides of Reanimator is you have to have a fantastic first hand. If you're not doing something in the first two turns, hoping to draw into stuff is not the best answer. Having those uh, draw discard spells do help a little bit, but overall I think he's so weak to, uh, to the top deck that the mulligan has to be right and must be a tough deck to mulligan as well. No, that's not, that's not crazy. Okay, do we have a better six? I see at least a reanimation spell and one land. It's like potentially a cabal therapy as well. I don't know if I saw any targets. A little tough to see what's actually in it. I think he does have one of the uh, angels. I believe that's the angel that reanimates other cards out of the graveyard as well, so I can never remember what that one is called, but not a bad one to have, but it looks like we're going to ship it back. Go to five. Yeah, London Mulligan helps, helps me so much. Getting the C7 cards every time. And... Again, <laughs> he's looking for something specific, so it's not the worst thing. As long as he is able to play out a land or a Lotus Petal, but preferably a land. Some sort of discard outlet, reanimation spell in the first two turns, I think it's fine. I don't think any of his reanimation targets give him card advantage, so they do have to stick around. But thankfully, without being in red, uh, green. He doesn't have a real great way to deal with big creatures other than through combat or direct damage spells. So as long as the creature is big enough, it won't matter. And that looks interesting. There's a Dark Ritual, a Lotus Petal, both which are getting put to the bottom. Oh wait, no, I think he's doing what he's keeping. All right, so 
This actually looks like a fairly promising hand, assuming he has a way to discard things. But throwing the Nashiba back is very interesting. But yeah, I'm not seeing a discard outlet. So hoping, I think, to just draw into one. The best option would be an imp, of course. All right, and noticeably not playing out anything. Passing, and a turn one crypt is not what Joe wanted to see. Playing flashbacks to round one here a little bit. He did draw a discard outlet as well, but without any lands, it's not going to help, unfortunately. He does have a way to kill the bird. But he has to spend three cards to do it. This opting to not go that route. And also, I don't think drawing a land, unfortunately. I know the deck is land light, but this has got to hurt a little bit. All right, and exhum hit in the bin. And Joe really just hoping for a way to make some black mana. Survival. Ooh, and there we go, survival coming down. And is going to... I guess can't activate it yet. Joe, he found the black mana. And I think is going to have to... No, is not going to force the crypt. I don't know if Joe is actually running null rods in the sideboard, but it's something I definitely would consider. Uh, it does shut off the most common way to deal with the graver, which is crypt and uh, Frecton Furnace. And seeing how many people are running Graveyard Hate, uh, largely I think just for a Terror deck, it would make a lot of sense. <laughs> oh no. And so many things happening here. Discarding the Worm to Survival to go find uh, probably just another Worm. Oh, finding Anger, giving Haste. Discarding Anger with a mountain on the field, so everything has haste now, including that worm that just madness down. Ooh, I think that's brutal. Thinking about either... Is that Genesis? No, that's not Genesis. What is that? Is that the protection from black? Getting a spike feeder just in case. Smart call. And go swing in for four. And suddenly, Joe is looking... not great. Uh, I think if Alec had taken the land destruction, that would definitely have just shut the door with as few lands as Joe's been drawing in these games. Thinking things through here. Alec with a real clock and able to get an even bigger clock down next turn, just being able to go get another worm gonna be a big big problem all right he can also do he does he have another deranged hermit in hand I think he does deranged hermit coming down suddenly nine more damage on the board swinging for 13 total and <laughs> that is a big problem dropping Joe to three. And what possible answer could he have? He does finally get another mana source. Does he crack it? He can wipe the board. This might buy him some time. He can discard four cards. 
kill everything. Or can he? No, because it deals damage to players too. He can't do it, right? Right, Insidious Dreams deals damage to players, I'm pretty sure. Unless I'm mistaken, but I think it does. <laughs> Explain, I think, what happened. And yeah, that is just going to be game number three. Well, going out on his own terms and Alec taking it down, heading to the finals. Congrats to him. Joe, at least we got to see the deck do its thing in game number one. Unfortunate that Alec drew the sideboard tech both games two and three, which is really tough to deal with, I'll admit. Well, thank you to everyone for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. There is a Patreon link, sir, in the video description if you want to support the channel more. But your likes and just comments and just overall positivity about making these videos and the format as a whole has been so amazing. I just want to thank everyone for watching the videos, playing the games. Thank you to everyone who comes out to these tournaments. It's been a ton of fun. Our community in Portland has been growing like crazy. Yeah. A huge shout out to everyone involved in the pre-modern scene. It's been great. So yeah, I'll see you all next time.